Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Now today's video is going to be absolutely awesome. You guys better be psyched because I'm going to be showing you how you can duplicate someone else's color grade and just steal it and apply it to your own image within Photoshop. So it's really, really cool technique, super, super powerful that I'm sure you guys are going to love. Now, before I start in this video, guys, if you want to go ahead and get access to our how to edit like presets, that's every single how to edit like video that we've ever filmed, all the presets that you've seen in those videos, um, we, we've done is we've put them into a big bundle that you can go ahead and get access to. But even better, there's a free trial at the moment, so you can trial those for free. There's a link down below in the description to go ahead and get your hands on them. So without any further ado, guys, let's jump into today's video. Okay, so I'm super excited about this video, you can probably tell. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, showing you how to mimic this style of this artist called Monaris. This was actually a suggestion that I got from one of our viewers down below in the comments. If you've got a suggestion, drop it down below in the comments and we'll see if we can film a video for you. Cool. So what we did is we want to choose an image in the style that you know we want to mimic. So screenshot that image and then drop it into Photoshop. Now before we dive in, actually guys, go ahead and check us out on Instagram, Matthew underscore GKB, that's moi, and then Sebastian underscore JWB is Sebastian. That's uh, Matt and Seb, there's two of us. Um, Check him out, check me out, send me a DM, send me your photos, tag me in your photos. It'll be cool. The links are down below in the description. Okay, so get your photo here that you want to essentially mimic or copy, um, and then you want to drag it into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. Then you want to go ahead and get your own photo, and you want to drop that into Photoshop as well. Now, what we're going to be doing is essentially moving across the color palette from the first image and applying it to the second image. So the way we're going to want to do that um, is, well actually I'll get to that in a second, but the first thing is I want you to go ahead and do some minor adjustments to this photo. So the first thing is make sure your highlights, midtones, and shadows are at the like, kind of correct level. So here this image is very dark, highlights have been absolutely crushed, um, and the shadows there are really really quite dark. So what I've done is I've taken it into Lightroom and I've done the same thing, crushed the, the blacks, taken down the highlights, and the midtones obviously are fairly okay. So make sure the exposure of your image is fairly similar to their image, because otherwise um, it's not going to look, the colors will be right, but the photo won't match, if you know what I mean. Um, make sure the contrast is correct. Cool, so once you've done that, come back onto your photo here that you've sampled, come up to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. You're going to get this really funky looking like graphs and God knows what else up here. But we're going to ignore all of this and you're going to want to come to colors and then just type in 10. Select 10 colors from this entire image and you can see here it's going to give you a nice color palette of 10. Now you can choose more if you want, 20, um, but you're going to see they're all looking very, very similar. So just choose 10 to start off with. Come down to your color palette menu and then save color table and then save it in a cool destination, or not cool, but a destination that you know. So I've saved mine to my desktop now. Um, so once you've saved it to your desktop, you can just click cancel. You don't need that anymore. And then just come onto this image here. Come down to your blending modes and you're going to want to click gradient map. That's going to apply a gradient map above your image. Click on your gradient here to open up your gradient editor. Then come up to window, scroll down to swatches. Then what we're going to want to do is um, make sure we are selected on here. There we go, come on to swatches, let's just go to that, that's annoying me. Um, reset swatches, just because I've imported them already, so I want to show you how uh, to import them. Come down to load swatches. Now you're going to want to navigate to the place where you saved your color table beforehand. So here's my folder color table, I'm going to want to choose the color palette that I saved, click open, it's going to load them in, you can see from here to here is the ones that it's just loaded into my color palette. Now here's the fun part. Go ahead and click once on your gradient here, and then these tabs are where you're gonna really start um, adding in the colors. So this is your bottom left tab here. Click it, and then you're gonna to wanna to choose five colors that you think are gonna be vital to the image. So these are gonna range from your darkest colors up to your lightest colors. So I'm gonna sample my darkest color, which is this really deep blue here. And take a note of this level here. So the brightness here. So that's 11%. And we're going to want to type that brightness into our location. So it's going to put it here, right? 11% across our slider. Next up, we're going to click our second little palette here. And then click on color, sample another color. So we've done this one. Let's choose our brightest one, which is this one over here. So this will be our highlights now. So brightness is 51%. So you can see that's our brightest color. Um, 
well, the colour that it's given us is our brightest colour, which is only 51% away across. So you can see how much they've crushed the highlights um, in that photo there, which is why I wanted you to do that in Lightroom before we started. So there we go, we've got 51%. Okay, put our location down to 51. Now just click, add in a new one, sample a new colour. Let's try this brown. That is at a location of 31%. So let's, ooh, almost, almost got it right, didn't I? 31%. Let's add in a new one, color. So we've done the dark one. Let's try this gray one here. We've got brightness of 25%. So that was quite dark. 25. So we've got one, two, three, four. I like to choose five colors just to get a good spread of the entire image. And do, 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 do. so these colors are quite similar. Let's go with this one here, 42%. Location, 42%. There we go. Now we've got a nice spread of all the colors through from our darkest all the way up to our highlights here. Click OK and we're done basically. So we can just close off these. We don't need these swatches open anymore. And you get this really cool funky looking thing applied to your photo. Now you can see already that is pretty much applying the right colors to our photo. So there's a few cool things you can do here. The first thing that I think sometimes works the best is just leave your blending mode on normal and then just drop your fill a little bit. Um, not too much, let's go to around 55%, and you can see that that is mimicking the style very, very well already. What it's doing is it's taking those colors and it's applying the shadows to the shadows and the highlights to the highlights, you know, all it's pushing those colors and it's overlaying them from uh, where they should be. Now you can also have a play around and you can choose different blending modes like darken, maybe soft light, see how that goes, see which one you think works best. But sometimes I find just normal works the best. It does for this photo because it's such a you know, really intense color grade. Okay, so we're not quite finished yet. There's one final step to do. Sometimes it makes a big difference, sometimes it doesn't make too much of a difference, but we're gonna do it anyway. So come back onto your first photo here, create a new layer, make sure in your brush, so you press B, and then sample a dark color, like your, your shadows is what you wanna sample. Now I'm going to sample a blue color, simply because we don't have any of these really nice marine blues um, in the image that we do in this one, because of our sampling beforehand, it didn't really pick out any of these nice blues. So I'm gonna cheat essentially and just keep sampling until I find what I think is a nice blue, and that's gonna become our shadows. If not, you wanna just choose the darkest part of your image and brush that in, but you can see for us that's basically black, um, so we don't wanna be doing that. Then choose your highlights, find the brightest part of the image, do the same thing. Um, do we reckon we can get any brighter than that? There we go, so that's the brightest part of our image. Now we're gonna to wanna to find the midtones. So to find the midtones is a really cool technique you can use because all these colors here could be classed as midtones, uh, like this brown and this white is a midtone. So come up to select color range and then you can select midtones. You can see mine's already selected here, select midtones. Um, and then you can have a play around with your range. Um, and then you can also have a play around with um, your fuzziness as well to see what else it's gonna sample into it. So. I'm gonna choose quite a broad selection because what we're gonna do is we're gonna average that all out. So let's just click OK, Command J. So we're duplicating that selection onto a new layer. I'm gonna turn off this bottom layer here. Now you can see it's selected all those different colors. Now to get an average of those, we can just come up to Filter, Blur, and then just simply select Average. And already what it's done is it's just taken an average of all those colors um, so we can go ahead and sample just any point on there and that'll be our uh, midtones. So let's just brush that in there. So there we go. We've got our shadows, midtones, and our highlights. And we can just delete that. We don't need that anymore. Cool. So let's duplicate. So you can see, like those those three color palettes are really really useful to apply to the image. And we've got this nice terracotta color um, that's applied to the to the walls here as well because of our previous um, color table that we used. So now we're just going to duplicate this. Control click, duplicate layer, and move this onto our, oh, no, not onto new, let's put it onto Untitled 2. Boom, there it is, sitting re like ready, waiting for us to go. So now we're gonna apply these colors essentially to our curves. So you see what I mean? Come down to Blending Options, select Curves. Then you've got your three color pickers here. So you've got your black, you've got your grays, and you've got your whites. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn off our bottom layer here, and I'm gonna select our, this is our black point, select our 
color here, which is the blue. And then what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to select a region of this image that is that dark, like the shadows. So I'm going to select this region down here. And what it's going to do is it's going to apply that color to that area of the shadows. You can choose different areas to see which one works better. So I think that might actually work a little bit better for us. Um, let's get it there. Okay, there we go. So we've got now the blues in the shadows there, which is really kind of what we were going for. Then get your grays. And you're going to want to essentially select this midtone here, which is your gray point. So once that's selected, you want to come onto your curves here. Um, and you're going to want to apply it to a grey part of your image. So any part of your image that you think should be grey, um, have a go at applying that on and seeing um, which one looks best. So there we go. I think that's good. Um, we're applying this grey and it's going to give us this nice green tone to the image, which I think matches quite well with this one here. Cool. And then finally do the same with your highlights. Oh, let's turn that off. Let's just make sure we click the uh, this one here and then apply it to our highlights, or maybe to the white building here. Oh, I don't really think I've done that wrong there. Let's just, oh dear. Sample our white point, which is this color, and then select a region of our image that it should be white. Um, da, da, da. See, this is just making the image a little bit too blown out, which is a little bit of a problem at the moment because that's not really ideal. It's not really what I was wanting to go for. So um, let's just press Command Z and start again. Okay, so that's okay. But what we can do now is we can essentially just take our highlights here and then just bring those down a little bit because it's essentially just applied that a little bit too strongly in the highlights, which is not what I wanted to do. Okay, so then we can just close that off. Um, and get rid of our colors there. Now, as I said there, we've crushed our blacks a little bit too much and we've kind of brightened up our whites a little bit. So we can bring up our shadows there. Um, and we can bring back the detail in our highlights a little bit just by bringing that down. Um, and as well, maybe brighten up the midtones a little bit. So there we go. Um, that gets a little bit better look there. And we're going to put that back into soft light um, and then we're going to adjust our fill and bring the fill right the way down to see how that affects the image. Um, I think it looks a little bit better when it's a little bit more contrasty, when the fill's slightly higher. Uh, you can try different blending options like overlay, for example, that might give a cooler effect, but I think soft light's working quite well. Okay, so there we go, guys. You can see already, uh, let's just remove that, we don't need that. You can see how that is applied, essentially the same color grade to this photo. Um, just to duplicate someone else's color grade onto your photo. So hopefully you've learned a little bit there and you've got some really cool um, techniques that you can go ahead and use. Now, as you can see, it's not an identical like color grade, but it does give you a very, very good um, you know, interpretation and it should match their look very, very well. Now, like I said, um, what I would prefer to do is do a basic color grade within uh, Photoshop to, or Lightroom or Photoshop to start with. Um, before I go ahead and do anything. But what I'm going to do now is I am just going to do a cheeky three point curve just because I think our shadows are a little bit too dark. I'm going to add in that tiny bit of fade um, that I was talking about earlier, brighten up those shadows. And I think we're going to bring down those highlights there because we've really got, um, whoa, that went weird, a um, little bit too much on the highlights. Okay, there we go. That's all right. Just crush those highlights. So now that's just going to apply it and brighten it up a little bit. And it looks a, little, um, a lot better. Okay, cool. So that's the end of the video, guys. So hopefully you've learned a bunch. That is absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you want to go ahead and get a free training session where I talk to you for about an hour and I train you uh, through the more advanced editing techniques within Lightroom, you can check the the link down below in the description should be like free training or something. Um, go ahead and watch that. And of course, if you want to go ahead and get our presets for a free trial, you can as well. The link down below in the description. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.